On behalf of all of us here with the Calgary Flames, my name is Beasley saying so long. Enjoy your evening. Now down to Brandon Parker and Corey Sarich for tonight's Flames TV Live post-game show presented by Original 16. Original 16 gives you the chance to win one of three Calgary Flames fan experiences. Details in the new limited edition 15 packs of Canadian Pale Ale, Original 16. Official beer sponsor of the Calgary Flames. Must be of legal drinking age, no purchase necessary. Welcome inside Flames Post Game Live. It's brought to you by Original 16, celebrating things done well and celebrating a Calgary Flames victory here on home ice. 4-3, the final in overtime and uh, an entertaining hockey game as we welcome you inside. Brenda Parker alongside Corey Search. And uh, we knew heading into this hockey game there would be a little extra emotion attached to it in some form or another. And uh, the return of Johnny Gaudreau and the Columbus Blue Jackets in town. But, um, you know, I'm not sure we expected overtime necessarily, but, it, you know, especially as that first period went along. But here we are, and uh, Flames find a way to get it done. What did you make of uh, what we saw here tonight? Well, that was a big finish for the Calgary Flames. They needed those points uh, desperately. Um, this game had a little bit of everything. You had some cheering, some boos. We all know yeah. who most of those were for. Sure. Uh, yeah. Number 13 returning to the building for his first game tonight. And then there was a little bit of a physical element at times. Um, there was some sloppy play. There was some crisp play that... Chris plays. This game had just uh, a little bit of everything. For a Monday night game, it was actually fairly entertaining. Yeah, the building was on fire early on, too, and uh, you could kind of sense uh, right in the pregame show. I think we were doing our pregame show, and uh, the second Johnny's face went up on the Jumbotron. We heard the first set of boos, uh, and even going back to warm-up. But uh, you know, what did you make of that uh, the emotion that was attached to the hockey game and uh, just sort of uh, some of the welcome back that came with it? That was a pretty nice tribute, and pretty Classy showing by the Flames, yeah. by both benches, everyone standing up, plotting him for his body of work here over the last nine yeah. seasons. And, you know, it's it's fresh. He was sure. such a big part of their playoff push last year, um, had a career season, um, was part of that top line all year long that we watched um, dominate and put up points all last year. So uh, it's a little bit bittersweet, I'm sure, for a lot of people, but you got to pay him his respects. He's a talented hockey player. Yeah, that's well said. Uh, and you kind of go back to over 600 games played in this uh, organization uh, over a decade when you go back to the draft year and uh, fourth round pick that obviously turns into a top five all time point getter in, the, in Flames history. So uh, you could tell that uh, there was some emotion attached to it. And we'll, we'll get to some of the highlights here in just a moment. But first, we want to welcome in Blake Coleman, who's going to join us here live on the desk. and. Uh, chat a little bit more about it, and uh, uh, Colsey, welcome. Congrats on the win. How's it going? A little overtime, a little, uh, little energy, a little buzz in this building uh, on a Monday night against Columbus. What did you make of, uh, of how you guys you know, managed this one and then uh, eventually found a way to get it done? I was uh, electric for a Monday, I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, obviously a lot of buzz in the building. Um, you know, one of those games where, you know, they weren't going to go away and, and they made us earn it. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's nice to finally come on the right side of an overtime. Well, I don't know what you guys were expecting as a group. I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, and it's been talked about, but um, obviously the welcome back of Johnny, and I, that's obviously part of the energy that came with it. But I don't know if you guys feed on that a little bit, and, and some of that came with it. But, you know, what did you make of the evening from that standpoint and uh, seeing Johnny back here in this building? Yeah, it's fun. Obviously, it's a emotional night for him. Uh, yeah. You know, he was here for a long time, and he was a good teammate. And... Uh, you know, rightfully so. The fans were giving it to him, and yeah. it's fun to uh, have that atmosphere and and uh, be a part of it. Obviously, um, you know, he made a few plays on us tonight, but uh, ultimately, it's nice to to, to get the win. Yeah. I was chatting uh, earlier during the telecast with a few guys about being a player and then going back to play and face old teammates, and it's kind of a weird feeling. Just give us a little rundown on yours when you had to face the Tampa Bay Lightning again. What kind of feelings, emotions? How did the game go for you? Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of emotions. I think, um, you know, specifically when you go back to your old old uh, home rink. I think, um, you know, it was my family came down for it. It was it was a big one for us. And, um, you know, it's it's weird. It's a weird feeling. You know, you battle guys in practice, but it's a different level in a game. And um, you know, you really want to win those games. It means a lot to you. And um, you know, I got to see the the banners up there when I went back and things like that. So it's. It hits you kind of in different ways, and um, it's always a fun time, though. And, and uh, once the puck drops, ultimately, it's just uh, another game that you really want to win. I know it was uh, 
Kelly Rudy alluded to it tonight on the telecast. He said he didn't fare very well in his returns to his <laughs> places, and I, I feel like I felt the same way. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't really go my way. No, so yeah. nice to hear that some guys are having a little yeah, better experiences. <laughs> Uh, and specifically able to spoil one here a, a little bit tonight, too. I just want to ask you quickly, that, uh, you know, obviously they scored those two uh, power play goals in the second period, but, uh, you know, the Lucic fight, uh, it seemed to kind of spark, re-spark the building a little bit. And then, you know, your shift, obviously that line, uh, you guys go to work kind of below the goal line and set up that 3 2 goal. Maybe just the momentum and the change and how that kind of shifted things for you guys. Well, it was a big fight. You know, it's, yeah. uh, Lucic is one of those guys where when the gloves come off, everybody gets up and pays attention. And yeah. um, obviously that, that was something that we needed, a little bit of a wake-up call after two quick ones on the power play. And, um, you know, so a lot of credit to him for getting us going. And then uh, just a, you know, workman shift again. And Mange uh, obviously had a good shot there to yeah. give us back the lead. And, uh, again, they, they came back again, and we had to find a way to, to get another one. Noticed a pretty physical effort against Tampa last game. Um, this game, it had elements. It had a little bit of uh, chippiness to it as well. And it's coming from everybody. Is that something you guys have talked about in the dressing room, or is it something coming from the coach? Or is it just something that kind of has naturally happened the last couple of games? Um, a little bit of, I guess, all of it. Um, you know, I think we we harp on team toughness and, and five guys. If somebody's going, we're all going kind of thing. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, I think we're hitting that point of the year where Points seem more important, and games are starting to get uh, that much more important here. And I think uh, that kind of rises that uh, competitiveness in guys, and it's going to lead to a little bit more of that. Anybody know Walker's goal went in? Any, any anybody around? <laughs> uh, that shot? <laughs> I, I had no idea. I think uh, Felch said he knew. I think he was the only one in the he building. Was the only one? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. Good stuff, Coles. Appreciate the time. Yeah, uh, thanks, congrats Coles. on the win. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks, guys. Blake Coleman joining us here live, uh, able to spend a few minutes with him, which is uh, always great to have him on the desk and uh, part of a 4-3 win. And as we uh, talk about the game, let's roll the highlights because uh, we'll take you through some of uh, everything we just discussed here tonight. And uh, obviously started with a good start for the Calgary Flames, and uh, it was a penalty shot early on that could have changed the uh, maybe just some of the momentum early on but that was stopped and then this is the goal we were just talking about uh, maybe Jacob Pelche was the only one that knew it went in because even Walker said he didn't. Stripes didn't know it was in either that, <laughs> no, was, that was for no. certain they were looking around digging but yeah it gets sneaks through there pretty quickly and then got stuck under all that padding at the back of the net but there she be. There it is the uh, photo evidence and it comes uh, out of the hands of the linesman Walker to her second National Hockey League goal at that that's point. That's his second goal in question. Yeah that's uh, right that's right exactly and uh, at that point made it a one nothing hockey game but uh, here would be early on in the second period and this was about 92 seconds in and a big one at that time because of all the momentum and all the chances in the first but to make it two nothing here early. Yeah and with the amount of turnover turnovers that the Columbus Blue Jackets had early they're lucky to only be down 2 nothing at this point. They gave the Calgary Flames some pretty good looks, but again, some sloppy play. Maybe the puck's bouncing a little bit, but good on Kadri to cash in on this one. And we're going to see another one that looks eerily similar coming up a little later in the game. Yeah, no question. And uh, But first, it was a pair of power play goals, about 49 seconds apart. And uh, both of them set up by Johnny Gaudreau. We've seen this a time or two in this building. A couple of seam passes. First one, Kirill Marchenko here. Yeah, just in off the rush. He's not looking to take that to net, looking for the trailer and puts it right on his tape, and that's yeah. one heck of a shot. Ladar did not stand much of a chance on that one, right inside the post. So that was a quick goal on the power play, quick penalty, and then back on the power play, and then kind of another another seam pass that this time finds Patrick Line who gets the shot off. Yeah, kind of a seam pass. Kind just of a seam a pass. direct sauce that lands about two centimeters in Absolutely. front of Line's tape, and then it takes a pretty special guy to shoot a puck like that too. Sure. And yeah. That's a, that's a pretty deadly combination if you're going to let those two make plays like that. So line has got 14 on the season. That tied it up at two, but this is the shift that Blake Coleman just talked to us about. And uh, Workman, like, he obviously forces the turnover behind the net. Michael Backlund sets up Andrew Mangiapane, and you got a 3-2 game. Yeah, and again, another one of those goals from right in the middle of the slot, uncontested. Manj has all sorts of time, and I guess it's a bit of a broken play, but nice hard work by Blake Coleman there to get in and put the pressure on that young defense. Yeah, and uh, yeah, obviously they talked about not going away, and this would be uh, one of those examples, a two-on-one, and Johnny Gaudreau's the option, but Boone Jenner doesn't take the option. He chooses to shoot, and that's a good choice on that one. Yeah, and Flames did give up a few two-on-ones tonight. I know that Vladar had to make a beauty save in the second period on one of them, and that one, that one hurt a little bit. Made, made this game very exciting. There is uh, the non-call that you hear the bench kind of erupt and wanted one, but it would lead to a two-on-one the other way. And how about the finish there, the setup from Andrew Mangiapane, but the finish by Dylan Duca. 
And the, we've had a few of those calls go the wrong way for the Flames this year, so it's nice to see that the non-call uh, worked in their favor and nice little OT result for a change. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, because yeah, there's no question there's been a few uh, penalties called in the extra frame that's led to a power play goal going the other way, but uh, that was perfectly executed by uh, Montrepani and Dubé. It is the game winner, Dubé's 12th of the season as we listen in on what the uh, head coach, Daryl Sutter, thought of tonight's hockey game. Here's his thoughts following a 4-3 overtime win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. What was your assessment? That was a really good effort by our club right through the right through. I think that, you know, we lose Tan, he only gets a couple shifts, and so you get down to five, and, you know, it showed up a little bit in the third, but now that five and five, we were, it's a better team. You just mentioned down to five D awfully early. Do you have any update on Chris? No, he was just getting evaluated, so I don't know anything tonight, obviously. Another example of how key special teams are in this league on a nightly basis, Daryl? Yeah, you know what, though, the second period, those, those penalties, just, where you know when that uh, Naz goes over, but we got caught uh, not getting pucks out there. There's about three or four icings in a row, so extended shift. So other than, other than that, two or three shifts right in there, we were we were really good. And man Japani ended up with with three points, I believe. Were you, were you pleased with the effort he? Yeah, you know that line gets lots of opportunities. I know overtime it's him and Dylan, but they they do lots of. You know, power play together, family kill together, so they're pretty familiar. You talked lots about improving the record in overtime. What's been the focus there? Well, if you play a complete game, you don't have to go to overtime first. So the only other focus is score, and you got to check. I mean, the teams are you know, they can they put they can put uh, Johnny and Liney out there, so you got to check. You got to have the puck, but I think other than the Line one, one play. I think we had to puck the whole overtime. This is one of those nights that there's a lot going on. I'm sure there can be a yeah. lot of distractions. How do you think your group handled that part? Oh, uh, that we were in total control. That's as I said. If you're not, you're not going to be a good five and five. And we were. I mean, other than the penalties, Johnny's that's what he said today. He's going to be over there and he's going to make the play over there lining. That's what he did. He did it twice. So it wasn't like it was. Oh, that's a surprise. Walker Dewar's shot might have fooled 18, 19,000 people out there. Did you think that was a goal when you first Well, saw I couldn't it? see the puck. I didn't know where it went because you looked at the replay, and Tyler and I were looking on the bench. So I said, I don't know where the puck is, but it was stuck, and I didn't know that. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Go to the room. All right, uh, there is some thoughts from head coach Daryl Sutter, and uh, confirmed he didn't know it was in either, so... Uh, Right now, the only confirmation possibly is Jacob Pelche, but uh, everybody else was at a loss. Uh, good thing that thing got stuck in there and didn't come out. Wedged, wedged. Might not have caught it on the review either. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> all right, so there is uh, some thoughts from head coach Daryl Sutter. Obviously, uh, the focus uh, shifting quickly to winning it in overtime. And as he talked about, it didn't really allow uh, Columbus to have much of a, you know, much opportunity with the puck in the overtime, which is what it's about, possession, and uh, Flames did a good job of that to finally produce that game. Yeah, and you know, it just kind of felt like that was the theme for the whole game. Yeah. I thought yeah. the Flames did a great job of having a lot of possession. There may have been a few mistakes that led to chances the other way, but they were all over it tonight. Maybe that little lull at the start of the second period, but pretty strong third period, and then again, overtime, they were, they were buzzing and full yeah. control, and Columbus never really got a sniff. Let's uh, quickly go inside the Calgary Flames locker room. We'll hear from uh, our first guest on the post-game show from the locker room. That would be Flames forward Dylan Dubé, the overtime hero. Let's hear from him now. Way to finish things off. Yeah, I think uh, when uh, would have been better if we won it in uh, 60 there, but yeah, it was nice to get the win. We really needed that. It was a huge effort. Lucha's fight there for sure got us back. Uh, going the way we needed to. I think we let off our foot off the gas a little bit in the second, and then uh, Luch fired up the building for sure, and uh, we finished with a good rest of the 30 minutes there. So it was really good by him to get our team going again. Do you feel that energy? I mean, with John coming back is one thing, and it certainly adds to it and maybe starts it off that way. And then for Milan to do it, did it feel like there was a little extra juice in the building tonight? Yeah, for sure. It felt like we knew going in, felt like there was a buzz around it for sure. And, um, you know, to... Get the first goal, have a good start, and uh, and go from there. I think it helped us out a lot. And then for him to step up like that, uh, 
you know, the building was rocking for the rest of that period. Like two fights in two straight games, like what do we do? Just hands look like after a game. <laughs> I sit beside him, so I might start <laughs> icing him for him. I don't know. They're, they're uh, beat up a little bit, but um, you know, I think he's used to that. Uh, you know, he's done his whole career. He's, he'll he'll be fine. So it's uh, you know, it's fun to see when you're on the bench like that. He's uh, uh, he plays the right way, and he's you know he's gets us going for sure. So it's awesome to see. What was it? The last two games are completely different, but are they both character wins for this group? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you know we came off of uh, you know, a really good 60 minutes um, in that Tampa Bay game. We knew we needed to have a good start. We tried to. We did follow that up uh, tonight, had a good start. Um, you know, Louis line uh, got that goal for us. And Bax made the play, but it was, uh, it was a great start for us. And, you know, we only, you know, took a couple minutes off there in the second, but that's this league, they get a couple goals there. But these last two games are the way we need to play and, and, and need to continue to play that way the next two games for the break. Have you ever seen a goal where literally nobody in the arena knows where the puck is? I, I actually didn't think it was in either. Like no one, we thought he saved it. Thought it got stuck in his gear, and uh, even on the first replay, I had to see the overhead on the bench there to make sure it went in. But yeah, it was a uh, weird one to score your first one at home. Had like the celebrations <laughs> a little delayed there, but it was. Uh, yeah, we're all pumped for him. It was great to see. Dylan, I know everyone in this room thinks really highly of Johnny, but what did the energy do? Like there, there's the missed penalty shot, the crowd goes wild. What, what did that energy do on your guys' bench? Yeah, it builds in our favor. I think, uh, you know, their the fans are very passionate. They care a lot about about our team, and, and that's what they showed tonight. They care a lot about us, so it, we appreciate that and felt really good to win for them tonight. Bill, did it even surprise you just how intense the, the jeering and the booing was? Like, like it caught some of us off guard. Did it surprise you at all? Or? Yeah, a little bit. I didn't know if you're expected from Kachuk and, and, and follow up to here. But, um, you know, I think that just shows how good of a player he was and how important he was for this organization because you don't get a reaction like that if, uh, <laughs> if you're not that, uh, you know, if you're uh, not that important. So I think... Uh, you know, the louder it is for someone like that, the better you were. Quick thought on Aaron Mangiapane too, because he was all around it tonight. He's awesome. He's he's great. He hunts the puck. He's relentless. He's been last while. He's been our top player. He plays the right way, and that whole line's been awesome. And they, you know, they build games for us and create momentum. And it just showed tonight uh, what that line can do together. And and he's a huge part of that. Uh, you know that trio there going for it. So it's 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 a lot of fun to watch and. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a character guy. It's always fun being out there with him. Okay, thanks, Jubes. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Oh, like might be missing something. Oh, nice shoot. All right, there's some uh, thoughts from Dylan Dubé. And uh, early on in his uh, post-game availability, talking a little bit about that uh, sequence in the second period and Milan Lucci chopping the gloves with uh, Olivier and just that scrap. Obviously, kind of uh, at that point, it was 2-2 hockey game. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the life, or at least the building, gets a little quieter. What did you make of that sequence? And second consecutive game with a pretty it, good tilt from number 17. It was badly needed, and I know that he often has troubles finding a dance partner out there, but this couldn't have come at a better time. The Flames were reeling after two power play goals against. Everything was quiet. Dome was quiet. Yeah. This got the boys back into it, and those are some pretty heavy rights right say. there. So yeah. probably a quick little conversation there at the end of it, a uh, little bow out. The old beak and cheek didn't look so good there for Olivier, but uh, yeah, yeah. Luch is one big man, I'll tell you that. And heavy. you know, he had he had the scrap against Tampa. It, yeah. The timing was maybe not the same. We we looked back and reviewed that, and it was uh, yeah. earlier in the game. But there it is. Gonna feel that tomorrow. A little bit. There might be a couple of ice bags there for sure. Perfect timing. Um, I don't know if it was something that he went to look out and do. I don't know if it's just something that came during the course of the game. Sure. But uh, if that was planned, then good on Milan Lucic. He should get, yeah. get the fourth star tonight. <laughs> That's absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I think it was his ninth scrap, Olivier's ninth scrap of the season, and second straight for Milan Lucic. So two guys who are no stranger to it. Uh, let's go back inside the Calgary Flames locker room. Now some cadre standing by now, one of the goal scorers, team leading 19th of the season here tonight. You've seen all these types of storylines come and go in your career, but when a guy like that comes back uh, and John into this building, then you get a you know a pretty emotional boost yourself with mm -hmm. uh, that fight, and then it just kind of continues. Did it feel like there was a little extra juice in the building tonight for where you sat? 
Uh, I think it did. I mean, I'm sure from where you sat also, you know, you could, uh, I think everyone could tell. And, um, you know, of course, uh, the fans were excited about this one, and it's nice to, you know, cap it off with two points. That last two games, completely different games and different opponents, I get that, mm -hmm. but does it seem like these are two character wins for this room? I, I definitely think so. You know, we uh, another character win tonight. We, you know, short bench. We find a way to, uh, you know, hang in there and fight off some adversity and uh, had a lot of opportunities and, you know, for the, for the most part, played a pretty, uh, pretty solid game. So that's always good to see. And, you know, I think around this time of year, you know, everyone's kind of starts to understand how we need to play and what our identity is. And, um, you know, it's mid-season for a reason. You kind of kind of fight the adversity of the, the dog days of a 82-game schedule. But, um, you know, this is the time where you uh, start to dial in the, the detail. This team's had some struggles and extra time this season. How have you guys kept that from becoming a here we go again scenario when you get past 60? I think we we're just our maturity. I mean, we got a lot of mature guys, and we understand that uh, you know any one of us can can uh, make a play on any given shift. So I think we just gotta you know have that confidence, and now you you know you string a couple wins together, and I think uh, you know that goes a long way. So um, you know we just gotta continue to do those right things and depend on each other. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we'll continue to get results. I still have, I've tried to watch Walker Deer's goal a bunch of times, and I mm -hmm. still don't want to know where the puck was. Do you have any idea what happened there? I had to watch the replay a couple times for sure, but I think it went straight in. I think it went straight in and uh, just kind of stuck in the back. Uh, uh, whatever they got back there, it just kind of hung out, didn't pop out, so n none of us were really sure. But, um, you know, great job by Walk, staying ready, being ready to shoot. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's just about catching the goalie by surprise. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Welcome back inside the Calgary Flames post game live. It's brought to you by Original 16, uh, celebrating things done well. Brendan Parker alongside Corey Sterich putting a wrap on this 4 3 win in overtime. Flames over the Columbus Blue Jackets. And uh, heard from a couple of guys, obviously talked about a number of different topics. But one thing we didn't uh, address right off the top is the fact that uh, very early on in this hockey game, you know, your blue line goes down to uh, five defensemen. Chris Tanev ends up leaving this hockey game back in the first period. And uh, how did you think uh, the blue line managed as a group of five? And obviously, some bigger minutes spread throughout the back end yeah pretty well you know it, they didn't really seem to miss a beat tonight there was uh obviously a lot of rasmus anderson out there tonight he played 28 minutes in this game but yeah. not much of a play here but just clipped tanif from behind and i know i've experienced that before as yeah. a player you take that in the shoulder it could be your ac joint that just in behind um separations don't usually happen like that um, hopefully it's not something that's going to keep him out long term and we can speculate a little bit, but he's a big piece of the puzzle, Chris Tanev, especially when it comes to the penalty kill. Maybe that's where they felt it a little bit tonight. Uh, a couple of those goals, though, we can't really, yeah. can't really say anything about the defense. Great shot and uh, a couple of great shots. Yeah, Line A on the second passes, one. So. Shots, yeah. But just overall, I think the guys, when you get those extra minutes, um, you got to sh shorten up your shifts a little bit. Yeah. Be smart about it, especially second period. It's a little harder to manage with five defensemen. Yeah. But Long change. For some guys, you embrace it too. Uh, Stone played a lot tonight. Uh, Zadorov got a lot of extra ice time. Yep. So it's it's good for those guys too. You you. It's easy to get in a rhythm when you have five defensemen. Yeah, Michael Stone around 16 minutes, but obviously Rasmus Anderson logging a bulk of it uh, up there near. 28 and a half minutes here tonight, and uh, Noah Hannafin not too far behind him as well as uh, Nikita Zadorov here tonight. Calgary Flames get the win. That's the most important thing. And, uh, you know, maybe as we kind of wrap things up here, let's just a, a final thought on, uh, you know, kind of the evening and, and maybe as we kind of look at uh, Johnny Gaudreau's night here as well and just, uh, you know, how that all uh, unfolds and some of the atmosphere that goes around. Everyone's kind of talked about feeding on it, but it's interesting that you kind of want to spoil that party. And uh, we'll show some of uh, his night's work uh, as we wrap it up. But just, uh, you know, the opportunity to come in and uh, play in a formal building, as you've, you've said before, that it, it, it is a little strange. Yeah, it's definitely strange. You look across the ice and you see all these guys that we were just teammates for for the longest time. I spent seven years in one spot and then, then had a change. And it's not easy. And, you know, guys are probably chirping you on face-offs yeah. out there. But 
couldn't ask for a better night tonight overall. You get to see Johnny in action. Um, I love, him, so love him or hate him, I guess, here. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can hear it. <laughs> you can hear it on that breakaway. Um, he did remind everyone of the high quality player that he is with some yeah. very high quality passing tonight. A couple of beauty assists. We're going to watch. Yeah. We'll couple probably see a couple of them in this package. So this is the Vladar save, but yeah, dancing kind of around. This is one of those passes right here on the Marshanko power play goal, and then obviously the uh, one to line it. Right and then there. As the game as the game progressed and went along, Flames grabbed the lead again. Columbus ties it up a little bit later in the game, but ultimately, Flames prevail. And this is a definite two points that they had to have tonight. You can't have a team that's struggling like Columbus come here and sneak two from you after you just beat the two-time Stanley Cup champions. You had a tough one to the abs the game before that. You got Chicago coming up next. This is a homestand. You got to get something done here and that now it'll, the focus will be on the next one. Yeah, obviously two big wins, two big points here tonight. And uh, now the Calgary Flames will look ahead to uh, Thursday night, their final a home game before uh, the bye week upcoming. In fact, just two games left before they depart for about uh, 10 days away from action uh, bye week and then the all-star break upcoming as well. Thanks for doing it. Appreciate the time tonight. Thank you. A fun one. Thanks for having me. Columbus Blue Jackets and Calgary Flames putting about a wrap on this one here tonight. It's the Flames with an overtime winner courtesy Dylan Dubé on the setup from Andrew Mangiapane, but uh, the Calgary Flames welcoming back a familiar face here on this night. Plenty of energy, plenty of buzz. And plenty of entertainment to go along with it. 4-3 the final as the Flames look ahead to that final game prior to the bye week and all-star break upcoming. It's against the Chicago Blackhawks right back here on Thursday night. They'll then head quickly to Seattle on Friday to finish out uh, the pre-bye week schedule. Thanks for watching Flames Post Game Live brought to you by Original 16. For all of us here at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, we'll see you on Thursday.